Welcome to the Health and Wellness Show on your VOCM. Now, here's your host, Dr. Mike Wall. Welcome to Health and Wellness Show. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Wall, and today we're talking about how you can get a deadly workout from the comfort of your own home. My guests today are Dane Woodland, who's a personal trainer and group fitness instructor at Max and an ambassador for Lululemon. He's worked with a broad variety of clients and has also coached athletes in a variety of sports and national and international competitions. And with him is Dr. Vic Sajpal, who's an adult and pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Eastern Health, who happens to have an extensive background in competitive athletics and exercise. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank Thank you so much. So let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, These are special times, and I honestly can't remember a time when we couldn't head to the gym. There's probably lots of times we wish we didn't have to go to the gym. But uh, when you think about a gym, like, they offer a ton of equipment that's pretty easy to use, and I think a lot of the time memberships just cover access to the equipment, but now people don't have that. So first question is for you, Vic. Can people still get a good workout without a gym? Oh, definitely. If you, if you look at the demographics of uh, people, there's a very small percentage of people that probably have gym members in the first place, and then there's probably another small percentage that actually utilize a gym on a daily basis. So you're looking at a very small self set of people that probably, you know, are being impacted by not being able to go to a gym. But definitely, like, I mean, you look around your own house, you look outside, you can get a great workout and, you know, with a little bit of uh, creativity, ingenuity, you know, beyond just having to go to a gym. What do you think of that, Dane? Yeah, I totally agree. It's a, it's a great time to focus on just basic movement patterns, even mind-muscle connection, you know, how it feels to feel your body move in space. Uh, For people who go to the gym and are out of that opportunity now, this might be a a good time to focus on some of those form issues that might have been hindering their performance or causing nagging injuries, but are Mm -hmm. often, of course, not prioritized because we just love to go for the equipment and uh, some of the more impressive uh, or exciting movements. So I think this is a great time. That's good. And I think, you know, the social aspect is one thing, but but when it comes to the workouts, you know, you can mimic a lot of these things. But if people are going to work out from their house, you know, times are going to be financially tough for a lot of people. So now they're like, I can't go to the gym anymore. I have to buy a ton of equipment for the house. Like, do they need equipment? And if they were going to get some, like, what would be their, what would, what would be the essentials? Uh, Dane, do you want to field that one? Yeah, certainly. Um, I think that equipment allows us to kind of broaden the variety of stimuli that we experience, and it can certainly benefit us. Uh, I think it also helps our attention span as well, so we're not just, you know, doing some of the same things over and over again. That said, many people would argue that you can do quite well without equipment. Uh, I think that the learning curve is going to be really tough for people who typically do move using uh, resistance equipment and other devices that you can find at the gym. I think that you can get some very basic things. Uh, Like for myself, for example, I went and bought a stability ball and one single resistance band, and it cost me about 25 bucks. And I've actually found, you know, a lot of uh, utility and a a lot more variety of movement with those. So it Mm -hmm. could be any form of resistance, a band, a free weight, uh, you know, something like a TRX suspension trainer. But again, it also, it doesn't have to be much of anything to uh, get the job done. What about you, Vic? I think you you got some home equipment, but uh, what's your opinion on that? Uh, no, I definitely agree. Like if you if you look at it, um, you know, you, you break down what you want to do in exercise, right? If you look at the various aspects of exercise, there's a cardio component, there's a resistance component, and there's a social component. Generally, if you look at those mm-hmm. three types of things, right? And you know, if you if we break down to a cardio component, like you know, depending on your level, whether you're an elite athlete, you know, or someone who just wants to keep motion, mobility, and that sort of stuff. I mean, we're doing it right now in this day and age. We're going out for walks, you know. You can go out for a run. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we do have a lot of snow at this stage, but I mean, you know, when the weather gets better, you can go for bike rides as well and different things. So there's different ways to keep the cardio aspect. And and lots of times, you know, even in your own house, if you kind of set up a circuit or a training where you do push-ups, sit-ups, you can get that cardio effect by just doing a uh, cross fit type of workout which doesn't really require any equipment right Mm -hmm. and then if you look at the resistance types we got lots of things in our house everything you look at has weight to it even your body has weight right so if you add in push-ups sit-ups yeah, you, you take a chair, start doing dips, you know, do body squats, mm-hmm. lunges. You could hold, uh, you know, a bag of potatoes if you don't have any dumbbells. So there's <laughs> lots of ways to do resistance uh, training as well, in that sort of sense, right? So you got to be a little more imaginative and, and intuitive. The, and then the other part, even though we we're making fun of my BlackBerry there, the social aspect of exercise, if we look at that, 
my, for example, my wife, she's doing virtual workouts. VJ does some workouts with his buddies on, you know, FaceTime, different things like that. So you're also being able to keep the social aspect going. I mean, it's not most ideal as you're probably used to in your life, in your routine regimen that you probably did. But there are ways around it and ways of keeping healthy mentally and physically. Well, that allows me to jump into something right now because, Dane, you are actually currently engaging a lot of people right now by doing at-home workouts uh, using different social media platforms. Tell us a little bit about that. I've always kind of been doing some stuff on Instagram, even before, uh, you know, the current state of affairs. But as of last week, I took my first kind of shot at doing a workout on Facebook Live. Um, I did it as a fundraiser for the Single Parent Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. And I just couldn't believe how many people logged on, honestly. Uh, I had a lot of learnings uh, from that experience just in terms of how to actually put that content up there. And we'll be trying again soon uh, and even through my employer uh, as well. But it's amazing, you know, thinking about the network of people that I work with face-to-face, I was reaching way more people, you know, people from my hometown, people from other provinces, people that I didn't think would even log in. So if you have access to Internet and, you know, a computer or any device that has a screen and you can get on to something like this, we're really able to bring that into the home. And I think that the cool thing about some of these live workouts is that it does promote that community because you have people, right. you know, giving the comments and, and that sort of thing. And it's always a little bit more fun and interactive that way. That's great. The I think that's that's something that's interesting because a lot of times people go to the gym, they may not actually be interacting with that many people and sort of sticking to themselves. This may actually prove to be a more social way to exercise for a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. So let's take it from the medical standpoint, Vic. Why is it really important for folks to make sure they get their exercise right now where we're a little bit more locked down than normally would be, you know, and we can't get out as easily? Why Why is it critical at this stage for people to take care of that? Well, usually most people look at exercise as a physical component, right? But I think in this stage, you know, or we're in unprecedented times where you're locked down, you're in your house more, you, you have to look at the mental side of exercise, right? And I think, as we talked about with these various technology age, you know, virtual workouts, uh, FaceTime, it gives you that social connection with others or in terms of talking to people differently. And you're working out, you're laughing, you're, you know, joking around with different people. So it gives you that connection that you're still there's a human society out there that even though we're confined to our house, I think the other issue is it helps you manage stress. It gives you a regular mm-hmm. routine where you get up and you have something to look forward to, and it helps you in stress management. It makes you being able to deal with things in terms of, you know, the day-to-day announcements, the way the world is changing every uh, component and moment here as we look at the news. And also the fact that, you know, just by being able to handle the mental side and the stress and the physical side, it makes your body healthy. So if you have chronic illnesses and that, it prevents you from having high blood pressure, reducing your cholesterol, different stresses that would, you know, add to that as well. It helps your autoimmune system. That's something that we're looking at these days. You know, we're worried about this environment. We're trying to see how mm-hmm. healthy we can eat. We're trying to wash our hands as well. And, I mean, exercise, we know for a fact that it keeps your immune system healthy and, you know, more right. uh, optimal. And that's the thing that we may need for, you know, fighting this virus. Well, especially lungs and things like that from exercise. Obviously, that's something that improves. We know lung capacity gets better, and that's one of the things that the virus could be attacking. So, uh, okay, so uh, on to the mental health side of things. Dane, what's the feedback you're getting from the people that you're interacting with uh, online? It's uh, it's funny that you bring that up because I found that the feedback that I got the most in the comments was how sorely needed uh, that workout was uh, when I did go on Facebook Live uh, toward the end of the last week. And that was only a couple days into, you know, some of the changes that we had had socially, which I think that people are now uh, really adapting to. Um, people just need to connect. Uh, you know, we've gotten used to, you know, or maybe we've gotten sick of some of the same people that we're seeing over and over again. So drawing people together and just allowing, again, uh, as Vic mentioned, uh, for that space from some of all the doom and gloom and paranoia uh, that's happening right now, uh, it creates an incredible opportunity just to take a break and to focus on other things and to have fun and to even, you know, challenge yourself and to be proud of yourself for uh, completing something that's difficult uh, or might be physically taxing and then to get on the other side. That can be such a positive for yourself and I think at a time now more than ever we really need to promote that care for our mental health uh, as we move through these times. Okay so here's another thing though now recently all of our uh, our clinics are shut down so first of all like our, our ability to go talk to somebody that's that's not there anymore and also our ability to rehab. Dane you do a lot of work with people mm-hmm. in the rehab side of things how does exercise play a role when it comes to fixing up those injuries and Vic I'll get you to jump in after Dane's done on this one because I know this is your area too. 
Yeah, so some of those clients uh, of mine have actually been the ones that have been on my mind, I think, the most in the last little while. Um, I often end up working with clients who might have been discharged from physio and are still looking for a little bit more support before they move back into, like, their their, uh, training regimen. And I am kind of a, I guess, a big believer in this kind of use it or lose it philosophy with movement. And I find sometimes people who have had uh, pain and injuries can be really afraid to move and they lack that confidence because they don't want to, you know, further injure or tweak or end up, you know, back where they were when they started. Uh, so there often could be a, a fear of trying things uh, without supervision. And I think about those people right now and how they don't have access to, you know, treatment and again to uh, that support while they're moving. I think it's important that we keep we keep going, you know, finding ways to listen to the body and finding ways to know uh, how to do those movements effectively. We talked about some of the benefits of movement and of course, increasing your heart rate promotes that circulation, which promotes healing. So if we start to disrupt our progress because, oh, I can't see my physio or I can't see my trainer, uh, it's possible that we could, we could regress. Uh, I think that breaks always can allow for um, a decrease in inflammation and, and lessen some pain, but they don't, the breaks don't allow us to actually learn how to do those movement patterns properly. And if we don't learn how to move properly, when we try to move again, we can just, again, re-injure or bring out that pain again. So I think it's so important that folks, especially in, in those circumstances, you know, are able to find a way to continue to do that little bit of work, whether it's that homework that the physio has given them or whatever therapist they're working with, just so they can still try to work on the range of motion that they need to have. Right. Okay. Vic, what do you think about this? I agree. It's it's a difficult time for people who are injured and need uh, regular rehab because a lot of, a lot of Unlike exercise, rehab is more a specific goal in mind, Mm -hmm. you know, restoring a body function than, you know, just trying to maintain health. And, you know, it depends on where they are in their rehab. Like, you know, if they've had enough sessions, usually most rehabs trying to go to a home program allow you, I guess, more hours are at home. So allow you get into the benefit of, you know, working out uh, and helping those mobility motions at home. And if you're in that stage, then you probably will be beneficial that you could probably carry out while, you know, the three, four, five, six weeks that maybe you're absent from your regular regimen of, you know, visiting a physiotherapist or a chiropractor or whoever does your rehab until that period is resolved. There are opportunities that, you know, exist now in terms of virtual care. I know a lot of physiotherapists, you know, are even though with their offices going to be closed, are going to reach out to their clients and going to provide, you know, in a sense, ability to technologically see, go through routines and that. I think that's going to be coming, but it might be, you know, a lag factor between the person needing it and that sort of stuff. But it's important that if you're struggling that you reach out to any healthcare worker, you know, hospital, mm-hmm. various avenues of resources are existing that no one should suffer. And, there, you know, there are plans that can be implemented to help those individuals. We're doing it remotely, obviously, today because we aren't, we're all staying home. So uh, let's get into the basics for everybody right here when it comes to exercise. Maybe I'll throw this one over at you first, Dane. Tell us uh, the difference between the types of exercise that are out there for people to be able to get when they're at home. So I think that two big categories that we look at when we consider exercise are cardiovascular training and resistance training. So cardiovascular training involves increases in heart rate and uh, breathing rate, and it's generally performed in moderate to long-term bouts at a light to moderate intensity. So some examples of this are like jogging, swimming, biking, cross-country skiing. Cardiovascular training can also be performed in shorter bouts of work at greater intensities as well, like something like sprinting. Uh, and right. something like that, our body actually requires different types of energy, uh, kind of like resistance training, and a great example of that, of course, is strength training. So these forms, right. forms of exercise are going to be like mere seconds to a couple of minutes. So, for example, a working set of, say, 12 to 15 reps might take, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, intervals uh, for sprinting are kind of along the same category, just very short, intense bouts. So that kind of helps differentiate the type of training that we're doing. Right. Okay. Okay, so Vic, let's do a scenario for you. Somebody comes into your clinic and they've got some common health issues. So they're coming to see you because they got a bad back. They might be a little bit overweight. They got some high blood pressure or maybe they're diabetic. Uh, if they asked you what you uh, what they should do for exercise, you know, cardio resistance training, what would you say? I tell them a combination of everything. So, Mike, when I see that patient in the clinic, and let's say we need to, uh, you know, change their lifestyle, number one, and get them healthier, get them more fit, right? Mm-hmm. I look at it at three aspects. I tell them there's three aspects to training. Number one. There's a cardiac aspect, there's a resistance training aspect, and there's a flexibility aspect. So I said every muscle has to be trained in three aspects. You have to have endurance for a muscle, you have to have strength for the muscle, and you have to have flexibility for a muscle. And lots of people Mm -hmm. in society, you know, athletes, high-level athletes, they always think, oh, geez, i got to do circuit training, i got to do cardio, 
I got to do resistance training. But they forget the very important part of flexible training of the muscle. And what I mean by that is stretching, doing yoga. Some people do, some people do Pilates. No one ever thinks of those things as exercise. You know, it might be a few stretches before you do your rep, you know, your set, whatever you have to do. And I tell them that's the most important part. With mobility of injuries and trying to recover from injuries and trying to get back to a base level, you have to look at all three aspects. You have to look at the mobility right. of the muscle, the strength of the muscle, 